I am currently playing hooky from work and thrifting for jeans instead. If you didn't watch my last vlog, I found two amazing pairs of Levi's, but I ended up not buying them since they're still a bit out of my budget for now. I didn't end up finding anything worthwhile on this denim rack, but I always have a good time looking through the selection at thrift stores anyways. This retail therapy has come at a good time. Friday, a few days ago, I was kind of getting bummed out from work. For whatever reason, I kept getting emails from different clients, all wanting changes made to the photos I submitted. Some clients even said they wanted changes made, but didn't list the changes yet. So I was feeling uncertain and as if they didn't like what I submitted to them. Okay, so I ended up finding some gems in the men's and children's sections. I actually have been looking for another pair of white jeans. I loved this fringe detail at the hem and thought the length might actually be okay on me. These jeans were on the girls rack. There was no label or size but I've gotten pretty good at judging sizes and fits just by eye because of my previous fashion design experience. I've also been on the lookout for a crisp oversized button up shirt. It didn't have to be a men's shirt, but this size actually fits perfectly on me for how I imagined styling it. I just love how thrilling it is to shop at thrift stores because the whole shopping process feels like a treasure hunt. I know I tend to show you details of full brand shoots that often consist of 5, 10, or even 20 styled images. But the reality is a good portion of my work is comprised of piecemeal assignments too. And that's what we're going to focus on today. This is part of an image I need to reshoot for one client. And after that, I have a few simple product group shots to do for another client, also in white backdrops. These solitary days as a photographer have become the norm for me and sometimes I wonder if my creativity is suffering or thriving because of it. I'll be honest, I didn't get into commercial product photography for the creative potential. My perception of product photography was that it was a stable and COVID-proof field of photography. And up until the last few years, I thought most of the work would consist of white background e-com images. I was not expecting to have the creative and artistic opportunities that it has in reality. I was definitely burnt out from my previous career in fashion, and I kind of felt one of the reasons was the constant demand for creativity and newness. Not being able to come up with any new ideas that were usable made me feel like a failure or like I wasn't good at my job. One time when I presented my sketches for the second or third time to my boss's disappointment, she would just tell me this process was becoming painful and that she would just take over. While that didn't make me feel great about the work and made me feel like I wasn't a part of the team, I was secretly grateful to have the creative responsibility off my hands. So now I'm wondering what happens when I have deadlines and projects where I'm too depleted to come up with good ideas for. I have no other team member to fall back on. Not for this shoot specifically but there's definitely been times where the styling process took longer than usual and was becoming frustrating because I felt this nagging creativity burnout as well as the pressure to get it done for the deadline. I'll start shooting hundreds of unnecessary photos and second guessing every little decision I make. I know that's what it may look like here right now, but I'm actually proposing a few different setup options to share with the client for their input. I feel like creativity burnout is in a category of its own. 
it ebbs and flows, yet when we rely on generating new ideas for work all the time, is it unrealistic to expect it to be consistent? I think that's why I pin in an almost obsessive way on Pinterest and why I keep offering white background shoots. It's like I need to create some backup tools for the days where I'm feeling uninspired because I know that not creating is not an option for me right now. What are your thoughts on all of this? For those not in a creative role, do you ever experience something like this? And for those who feel this type of creative burnout in a professional setting, how do you deal with it? Unlike other types of burnout, I struggle to find ways to mitigate or prevent it since it's the core of the work I do, especially as the sole owner of a business. And I also realize I may be my own worst enemy in this as I'm not aspiring to ever be managed again or to be someone's boss. Which is all to say, I want to keep this business as a solo endeavor. I just finished a shoot where I absolutely got no footage, so that's why I have my backpack and this ridiculous looking circle bag that's actually a changing tent. I'm checking out Santa Monica Place, an outdoor shopping mall, before I have to leave. I forgot how prevalent outdoor malls are in LA. The space is really nice. I was kind of surprised how few people were here even though it was a weekday. Some areas basically felt like a ghost town. And I needed to find a bathroom. When you're a shorty like me, you notice things like these. Why is this hook up so high? I'm 5'2", and this is basically impossible to use. So, I guess I'll contaminate my changing tent bag with a public bathroom floor. to set up the backdrop on the frame, so I'm just going to tape it to the wall. You are about to have a serious case of deja vu because... That's right, we're shooting the same group of products as last time earlier this week. A loophole in my ongoing saga with creativity and burnout is to work with a creative director. I love getting a second well-informed opinion and feeling like I'm not doing this work alone, even if it means a bit more back and forth than usual. But unfortunately, it's often not possible to work with a creative director for these shoots. This right here is my holy trinity, a cozy read, cup of coffee and a fresh baked cookie. If you're wondering why I'm still reading the 200 pages long The Easy Life after two weeks, it's because I've been switching off with Age of Vice. Mm -hmm. 